leave you with two very crucial and important principles. The first principle, we have to learn how to stay away from or do away with all those stimuli that actually trigger the temptation of those things that we are trying to avoid. You know, I, I, I spoke to all of you about the story of my taking a vow, a resolve on the first day of Kartik to avoid eating sweets. And you may remember that on that very morning at 8 o'clock, my friend brought to me these five boxes of lentil and dar. I had a choice to either indulge or to improve. I chose to improve. I chose to pass the test. But simply choosing to pass the test internally and making that resolve wouldn't be sufficient. That's great, but wouldn't be sufficient when I'm not so strong from within. One of the crucial aspects would be that these five boxes of Lint Lindor white chocolate truffles would be sitting in my room for the next one month. And if they would be sitting in my room, there was a good chance that I would give in to them. The stimulus was right there. And if the stimulus is right there for one full month, there's a chance that that stimulus would trigger that temptation to eat those truffles and I might give in. So what did I do? Decided to do away with it and thereby to stay away from it. Just as my friend left, I called one of the monks from our monastery, our ashram, and gave away all these five boxes of the white chocolate truffles to him and said, why don't you distribute it amongst all of our monks? Which would mean each one would get about one or two of those truffles, which is hardly harmful really. So they were happy, thinking that I've given them such a precious gift, which actually I would have anyway shared with them. And I was happy because I took away that stimulus, which was a big risk for me to give in to that temptation and run away from my resolve. The three greatest fears earlier used to be, number one, the fear of public speaking, number two, the fear of death, and number three, the fear of flying. In the modern day, however, those fears have changed. The three greatest fears in the modern day today are, uh, the battery of my smartphone is weak, I do not have sufficient Wi-Fi signal, internet connectivity, and you know that Sudarshan Chakra, that wheel going around, still buffering, still loading. Uh, now jokes apart, isn't it a fact that many of us when we wake up in the morning, we want to look for the charger and charge our phones before even we charge ourselves. Isn't it important that we charge ourselves before we actually charge our phones? Somebody was mentioning to me that uh, he wants to uh, moderate the use of his smartphones. That's his bad habit, that he's really addicted to using his smartphone all the time and he wants to moderate that habit. Now, how do you moderate the habit of using your smartphone? That stimulus, your smartphone is constantly along with you. From the time you wake up till the time you go to bed, the smartphone's just around you. And if the stimulus is around us, it's going to trigger that temptation to look at it and what's going on on Facebook, what's going on on WhatsApp, constantly respond to all of those things. In fact, I don't know if you've noted this, if you keep your phone in the silent mode and that little buzz of a message coming up because you can't hear the, ring, the beep tone now, the little bzz kind of a buzz tone, it makes you alert. And sometimes you go to check your phone which is kept just away and realize that there's no message but it's just going on in your head. My God, such an addiction, isn't it? Now if you decide to moderate your use of the smartphone, I think there are going to be times through the day where you need to keep the phone away. For example, in the night, why do we need to keep the phone next to us? We could just keep the phone away from us. You would say, well, how would I get up? I would need an alarm, right? Use an alarm clock. We could just be using an alarm clock to wake up instead of using the alarm on the smartphone. Because if the phone is at a distance away, the temptation to pick it up the first thing in the morning would be the least. Also, we could keep the phone in a off mode rather than keeping it in the silent mode. If you keep the phone right next to your bed in the silent mode and if you wake up in the night, you know how, it is, how easy it is to come back from the flight safe mode and once again uh, get into that whole cycle of checking your social media statuses, checking our messages, your emails and ruining your sleep. So we just keep the phone away and we just turn it off because in order to get up, go get the phone and turn it on is going to take a while. So why not keep it away? Thus, if we keep our stimulus away, there is a good chance that we may be able to stick to our resolve of what we have decided. Now, somebody may say, but I also have to do work-related stuff. I need to check some messages for work. Sometimes I suggest have a simpler phone. 
you know, if it's just about messages or receiving calls or even email, have a simpler phone without all of the social media and you can keep that close to you because that wouldn't be much of a distraction really. There was something more serious than that. One young boy once came up to me and said, I'm really, really deeply and very badly addicted to internet pornography and I've decided that I want to completely get out of it because the only one thing that's on my mind all day and practically all the time is this. So I just want to get rid of this addiction now. How do I do it? I told him one of the biggest stimulus is internet. If you're going to be in a private place and you have an internet connection, well, you can control yourself for a while, but the chances and the risks to give in to it are very high because the stimulus is just sitting right there, which can trigger that temptation out of you. I told them, when you're in a private place, in your room or in your office, just make sure that you don't have internet connectivity. And if you do need internet connectivity for your work, when you're in a private place, try and make sure that your internet connection is not a very private, secure one, but it is kind of a public connection where most everybody could watch what you're doing. And even a better thing is to have a daily accountability to someone where you could actually go and confess and seek help from that person to deal with it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the principle that I want to leave all of you with today, the first one, is stay away from or do away with as much as is possible for you. That stimulus that will trigger your temptation and it will make us give in to something that we decided we wouldn't fall for.